Hello, this is Kerr, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to use the GoZ feature that's been added to ZBrush 4. Um, in this instance, I'm going to be using GoZBrush to create a tongue for my T-Rex that I'm modeling here. Um, people who have viewed my channel before may have viewed my Spotlight tutorial in ZBrush 4. Now I'm going to show you how to use uh, GoZBrush in conjunction with Maya 2011. Now, uh, a couple things uh, I want to mention before we get right into the tutorial here is is that uh, GoZBrush allows you to quickly and easily transfer models back and forth between Maya and ZBrush, all the while maintaining all your high-resolution sculpted detail that you created in ZBrush, which was one of the concerns I had about when GoZBrush was uh, first released was uh, I didn't know too much about the feature but I was worried that if I sent my model back and forth between Maya that uh, my high resolution uh, mesh would be uh, hard to recalculate but it's actually quite the contrary it's very easy uh, to use and very easy to uh, get started with so let's say you are in ZBrush okay, and you have your model with all its subdivision levels uh, right now I have this T-Rex at subdivision level 7 here let me close this subtool palette here and just focus on my geometry palette. Like I said right now I have seven subdivision levels for this T-Rex here. Uh, I created this T-Rex uh, in Maya first. I created a base mesh for it and then imported it over into ZBrush using the GoZ brush feature in Maya 2011. So if you look at Maya 2011's interface here you're gonna notice on the shelf over here you're going to have a go zbrush shelf with this single tab here to send your model back and forth between the two programs so once i sent the model over i was able to do some high resolution sculpting but now i want to take this model back into maya to add the tongue for our character uh, i am particularly not the biggest fan of z spheres in the world so this feature is actually very welcome for me since i prefer to build out a base in maya first now if you're going to be using GoZBrush for the first time, when you click on this GoZ application, it's going to ask you which specific program that you want to preset for your GoZBrush path. You can also access this through your preferences menu located right here under the GoZ tab and then you can um, decide which path that you want to use. Another important thing to note is, is that you're going to want to have your import as subtool turned on if you're going to be creating an accessory for an existing object. Otherwise, when you uh, go Z it back to ZBrush from Maya, it's going to create a new scene if you don't have uh, this import as subtool activated. So if you're using ZBrush uh, for, for the first time for GoZ, why don't you go ahead and click that uh, before you do anything just so uh, you don't forget later on so now just like I, I said I'm going to hit go Z and it's gonna load it's gonna drop my model to its lowest subdivision level and then import it into Maya let me go ahead and bring the Maya interface over here so you can see this a little bit better okay hit go Z and it's gonna bring up this message here and you can just go ahead and hit continue from there let's try that again there we go alright so you can see in the background there ZBrush has dropped my model to its lowest subdivision level and has now automatically dropped it right into our Maya scene let me hit 5 to go into shaded view here now you can, uh, let me minimize this real quick and say if you want to import all your subtools over at the same time you can just hit this all button and it'll bring every single one of your subtools over but in this case I really don't need that so I just brought my uh, main subtool over so let me go ahead and open Maya back up here alright so like I said I want to create a tongue for my T-Rex here okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my side orthographic view Okay, I'm not going to go through uh, the process of um, how to navigate through Maya because uh, this process is really just about um, using GoZ. So let me go ahead and turn on my X-Ray 
so I can see through this model here. And I'm just going to create a basic polygon cube. And I'm going to go ahead and start it right about there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and subdivide this a couple times. Give it a couple subdivisions along the width. Uh, actually, I'll leave the width alone. I'll put two in the height and two in the depth. Okay, so let me look at this from the perspective cam here. Turn on my x-ray here as well. And upon looking at this, I think I do want one subdivision extra in that direction as well. All right. So we have that started. So now I'm going to go ahead and scale this down a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and move it. Switching back and forth just to make sure that everything looks the way I want. Switching back and forth between x-ray and normal view. So I'm going to go ahead and scale this down a little bit just like that. Okay, so I have that set. So now I'm going to go ahead and go into my face component mode here. Whoops. Go ahead and isolate the selected object here for a second so I can select this easier. There we go. I can go ahead and turn Isolate Selected back off. And I'm going to go ahead and go into my Extrude key. I'm going to extrude this in the world axis. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this here. I'm going to go ahead and start bringing this down, kind of just creating that shape of the tongue. I'm going to hit my G key to repeat that extrude. OK, I'm going to start to scale this down a little bit. G again to extrude that. Start to rotate this back a little bit. Scale that down. G again, keep extruding until we get the desired result. And I think one more will do. Go ahead and rotate that. Scale it. Okay, let's see how this looks in our perspective camera. Okay, we've noticed that the tongue is a little bit too uh, straight up and down here. It doesn't have any sort of taper like you would expect. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that issue from my top view here. I'll go ahead and frame up on this. Go ahead and take my uh, vertex component mode here and start to shape some of these vertex points. And begin to taper this the way that you would expect this shape to occur. Go ahead and get my move selection out and kind of create that. Looks like it could use a little bit more tapering. Okay, once again, I'm going to go ahead and isolate this selected object so I can do some minor manipulations on this object before we go Z this back to uh, ZBrush. Alright, so we have the tongue here. But I kind of want to create that natural indentation that you would expect in a tongue. So I'm going to go ahead and add a couple edge loops here. So if I go under Edit Mesh, Insert Edge Loop Options, I'm going to turn on multiple edge loops, one edge loop so it divides it right down the center, just like that. Okay, go ahead and close out my options there. I'm going to go into my edge mode now. I'm just going to move these down a little 
bit. And I'll take these edges here. Whoops. I didn't want to do that. Go ahead and make sure I don't have any faces selected that I don't, I mean, excuse me, edges selected that I don't want. Go ahead and raise these up. Okay. Now go ahead and take this entire edge loop right here by double clicking on that one edge to select the entire edge loop for you. I'll go ahead and fan that out just a little bit. This one vertex point looks like it went just a touch wacky there so I'm gonna go ahead and fix that as well all right so we have that there and if I hit my uh, number three key and smooth preview that that looks more like what we want before I go ahead and send this back I'm gonna go ahead and delete these faces here on the back I'm not going to need those. Whoops. We might not even need these. Okay. Now, another important thing to note is that when you're going to send this model back, you just want to select the subtool that you are creating. Otherwise, um, undesirable results could happen. So we're just going to select this tongue here. I'm going to go into my Go ZBrush self and we're going to go ahead and send this back over to ZBrush. Okay? And here's our tongue. Loaded directly where we wanted it to. And we did that with very minimal headache as well. So if we go into our geometry, oh, excuse me, our subtool palette, click on our main T-Rex subtool and now go down to our geometry palette you'll notice that all our subdivisions still have remained intact give it a moment to calculate and get back to the highest subdivision there we go now we have our new piece of geometry that we can begin to edit in ZBrush and use all the normal ZBrush sculpting tools so I hope you enjoyed this look at GoZ and I hope you found it helpful.